Hey Sagittarius, welcome to your love and romance reading for October 2021. Now I'm saying October, but I just want to let you guys know um, the way that I'm feeling the energy right now intuitively, I feel like this energy is going to be around for a while. So even though I'm setting the intention for October and we will cover October, chances are many of you will experience this over the course of the next three months up to six months for some of you. So I feel that there's themes that are going to come up in this reading that you're going to see like starting in October and carrying through the next few months. I'm not an astrologer. I read intuitively. So if anybody has any astrological uh, proof of energy being around for a while, please feel free to educate us in the comments but that's just something i'm feeling intuitively let's see what's happening here for sagittarius sun moon rising and venus sagittarius sun moon rising and venus for love and romance please one more shuffle all right we're gonna get right on into it my darlings and see what is coming up for you guys so the first card coming up is temperance <laughs> oh my god i just got chills i just got chills okay all right so um this is special for you guys and i'll explain right now first and foremost anytime a major arcana card comes up in a reading this is letting us know that you're coming into a really important chapter in your life it's a really significant turning point and the experiences that you're having the things that you're dealing with are directly connected to something you came here to accomplish. And when the major arcana cards come up for me in a love reading or between two people, it tells me that you guys have had many past lives together before and that you have a contract. You have an agreement to meet in this lifetime for a specific reason. Now, when I look at the major arcana card, it'll tell me what that reason is. Okay, like what the contract is or what you guys agreed to work on together. If I get a bunch of major arcana cards back to back, it tells me there's going to be really big changes and a lot of like karmic clearing. So we'll see. We'll see how many major arcana cards come up for you. But the reason why I got so excited is for me in my readings, when I'm reading for someone and the major arcana card for their zodiac sign comes up, it's telling me that you have a lot of power in this relationship, more power than you realize, right? You have more pull. You might even carry more weight in the relationship. Uh, and this isn't about like, you know, uh, you know, being controlling or anything like that. But the reason why I got really excited is this is coming up at the foundation. So Sagittarius, this makes me feel that you may have had a lot of relationships where you really kind of had to like fight to be heard or you really kind of had to um, keep reminding the person of your uh, of, of your boundaries. However, when your major arcana card comes up, there's no struggle, right? The, the, the respect is automatic. The respect is given, right? You're not having to constantly remind the person not to step on your on your toes you're not constantly having to remind the person of your expectations of the relationship or that it's not okay for them to disappear or it's not okay for them to ignore you right you may have been with people where there were just power struggles right uh you say the sky is blue and they're gonna say the sky is purple just out of stubbornness you know so this makes me feel like any of you sagittarius who have felt like relationships you've really had to fight to be heard or to be respected or there's been an unfair power dynamic or power struggle you're breaking out of that now okay and then in terms of like a contract or an agreement the temperance card is about timing divine timing and uh like taking your ideas and putting them together Okay, taking two ideas or two things and blending them together. Temperance card also is about answering a calling, going in the direction in which we feel pulled or called. So many of you Sagittarius are on the verge of really big changes in your life right now that intuitively you're feeling guided. These are the very changes that are guiding you to this significant soulmate. Okay, 
um, those of you who are um, single, okay, the significant soulmate is coming in. And because of the issue of timing, I feel like you guys agreed specifically that you were going to meet at this specific time. So chances are the two of you are going through something very similar. Um, the both of you might be awakening at the same time or uh, making certain like specific in common lifestyle changes at the same time. Something about this time in your life. It was set for this time, right? And many, for a lot of you, you might be kind of like, well, that's funny that you should say that, Amethyst, because one of my biggest challenges in my love life has always been timing. Sometimes I meet the perfect person, but I met them too soon or I met them too late. They weren't ready for me or they were already married or, you know, like whatever the situation was, the timing may have been off. But you guys have agreed that you're going to meet at this time and this stage in your life. If you're currently in a relationship, temperance card is reminding you, you have more power in this situation than you realize. You need only speak up and be patient with the other person so that they can come around and you guys can work on uh, compromising with your ideas or blending your ideas together, moving into your future plans more smoothly. Um, and some of you might be really scared because you are awakening and you're like, I don't know how my partner is going to feel about the changes I'm going through and the beliefs I'm starting to have. Again, this reminds you that this whole situation is about you stepping into your power, your full authenticity. Sagittarius, you are breaking out of any labeling. You are breaking out of any conditioning. You are who you say you are. You're going to go after what you want and you're going to live your life unapologetically in that truth. And this is going to make you absolutely irresistible to this soulmate. Okay. Your next card that's coming up here is the High Priestess. Yikes. <laughs> now we have major arcana cards coming in back to back. So when the major arcana cards come in back to back, it tells me really big changes in a really short period of time, okay? Some of you are concerned about how your spiritual awakening is going to be affecting your love life, okay? But the high priestess reminds you to listen to your guidance, to listen to your intuition. Some of you might also be feeling a difference in the way that you're experiencing physical intimacy with people, okay? Um, how can I say this? Uh, the, I'm trying to think of the, the, the quickest way to explain this. So when you are connected with higher self and you're awakened and you're enlightened and you're in that high vibrational energy and you're connected like with the spiritual self, with the physical self, physical intimacy can be both a very physical and spiritual exchange. The energy can be very intense. And so um, sometimes, depending on how strong your intuition is or what stage you are in your spiritual development, you might find it very beneficial to be very selective about who you're laying down with, okay? Um, because those energies, some energies can be really parasitic. They, they, they attach to us. They feed off of us. Um, they court us. They're sending us all their drama, all of their fears, all of the things they're too scared to deal with. So, uh, grounding yourself, cord cutting, these are going to be really important things for those of you who are choosing to be, um, intimate with someone who's not doing their spiritual and emotional work or who are choosing to uh, just kind of like, you know, uh, have multiple partners. I'm not going to tell you how you should live your life. You know, if you should only be with one person or not be with anybody or be with a bunch of people, that's your decision. I'm not here to tell you what to do with your body, but you're going to benefit greatly if you can keep up with the spiritual hygiene, the same way that you would keep up with the physical hygiene, right? Uh, we take showers, we take baths, we change our clothes, we do our laundry, do the spiritual hygiene, clear your energy, ground yourself, cut those cords. 
okay? It's going to be really, really important. Um, I feel those of you in a committed relationship where you know this is your person, uh, you're not planning on going anywhere, you don't think they're going anywhere, you're just kind of worried about you're going through this awakening, there might be a little bit of turbulence for those of you who are wanting to do something in terms of like a spiritually based business. You might be like, hey, babe, I'm thinking of being an energy healer, or I'm thinking of doing tarot, or, you know, I'm thinking of being a meditation coach. There might be some bumps in the road, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, I feel here with these two cards coming up together, as I said, you have more power in the situation than you realize. You have more respect in the situation more than you realize. Some of you are with a very skeptical person um, and anybody else, they maybe would have just been like, oh my gosh, no way, get away from me. I want nothing to do with you. But I feel like even within the most skeptical person, you have credibility with them. They, they take you seriously. They might not understand why you want to do this. They might ask you not to do it. They might kind of debate with you back and forth. But I feel ultimately here in the end, they're going to come around for those of you who are facing that dilemma. Those of you who are single, okay, you have a really significant soulmate coming in. And again, this is going to be as you're, you know, following the path where you feel called, as you're being in your authenticity, you're going to have a lot of people pursuing you though. This significant soulmate is coming in, but it's coming in like a school of fish. Your fish is in the crowd, right? So it's going to be up to you to be selective about who you're letting in. Some of you are like, I'll hang out with all the fish until I find that one. That's all. Have a good time. And again, as I said, if that's the case, make sure you are doing the cord cutting, the energy clearing, uh, because you're going to have a lot of people that maybe even Sagittarius, like they're obsessing about you. Don't be surprised if all of a sudden you're like, whoa, like all of a sudden I've got all this mojo or all of a sudden I'm releasing some kind of pheromone that I'm just like beating them off with a stick. Don't be surprised if that happens for you. The next card that's coming up here for you guys is the Emperor. <laughs> Holy cannoli. We have all these major arcana cards coming in back to back. This is a significant relationship. Oh my God, I peaked, guys. I did something very naughty and I peaked because my curiosity got the best of me. You have all major arcanas. You have all major arcanas, all of them, all of your cards. And uh, I've been doing a lot of readings with this deck lately. It's a very well-shuffled deck, but Sagittarius, this is a big shift. And you have to forgive me because I've been away for a while so I haven't been doing the weekly forecasts, but when I was doing the weekly forecasts regularly, and I'm going to start again this coming week, by the way, but when I was doing the weekly forecasts regularly, um, you guys had an ongoing theme about how you guys were coming through this really big karmic shift and you were shifting into the more positive karma and you were coming into like the spiritual evolution right? Like this rapid growth, you're experiencing it in your love life also. All your cards are major arcana. This is huge. This is massive. This is, uh, this is uh, life-changing. You're going through a really, really rapid energetic upgrade. Now, with the Emperor card, this could be Aries or Scorpio energy. Some of you could be dealing with an Aries or Scorpio. Um, however, this is very, very structured energy. This is discipline. This is order. This is structure. Okay? So there could be issues that you're working out in your relationship. As I said, power struggles or situations with authority, issues with authority. You're working out. Now, Emperor is also father energy, father figure energy. Uh, there's been a reoccurring theme in a lot of the different signs lately around parenthood. Uh, there might be a lot of people that are deciding to 
um, have children or start families uh, because they're maybe thinking with everything that's going on, they might be feeling more like, well, you know, I want to make family a priority or I want to, um, you know, have, have, have a child or whatever it might be. There might be issues here in terms of, um, in terms of uh, having a child. And you might be looking at somebody in terms of like, I want to be a father. Is this going to be a good person to have children with? Or is this going to be a good person to be the father of my children? Um, there could be things here that you're working out with your father or father's side of the family through this process in your relationship. Um, emperor can also be a father figure or ancestors from your father's side of the family who have passed on like they're in the, uh, on the other side, but they're coming through with messages or playing matchmaker, bringing the two of you together. Um, and I feel like this is, again, a common theme that's come up for a few of the signs. And as I said, this energy feels very big to me. This energy feels massive. Um, some of you might even be feeling it and feeling very drained and very tired because we're coming into such a massive shift and your loved ones on the other side, they're still processing any family dysfunctions, any uh, negative patterns that have been handed down. So as you heal yourself from it, you're healing your soul family from it and you're healing your ancestors from it. So it's like they're coming in together like teamwork. We're going to do this together, right? They're looking at you, Sagittarius, and they're saying, man, poor Sagittarius has been struggling and we take responsibility for that because we made mistakes when we were living and those mistakes got handed down, handed down, handed down. And now poor Sagittarius is trying to break out of it. And so we want to step in and we want to help. We want to be the guardian angels. We want to be the protectors. We want to bring in the right partner. Um, we want to help change the cycle. And so for many of you, um, you're getting help or guidance from ancestors who've passed on. Again, when the major arcana cards come up, as I said, it's significant. This is a relationship that is destined. This is a relationship that has been agreed to um, on, on the other side. And they're helping bring it together right now uh, in, in the physical realm. Uh, I also feel here that the person that's coming in or the person that you're dealing with is highly, highly psychic. They're very psychic. I feel this, this is somebody with a uh, uh, very very like they, they have the they're very psychic but they have potential of reaching a really really high level of um clairvoyance okay um i'm clairaudient i receive messages through sound through hearing through words through conversation clairvoyance is somebody who uh can see like a fly on the wall or somebody who is uh who's able like to have visions right um there's a whole thing called remote viewing some of you may have heard about remote viewing remote viewing is basically clairvoyance this is someone who has that ability okay um they might not have completely and totally reached the full potential of it yet uh but i feel like this is someone who is wanting to and I feel like your spiritual gifts and abilities are really kind of coming to the surface here. And they're really starting to open up. Their third eye is like blasting open right now. So it makes sense to me that you guys have this agreement that you're going to meet in this lifetime at this particular time. I feel like you guys are coming together um, not just for the relationship, but for like spiritual work whether it's to work together as a spiritual team and some spiritually based business, or if it's just to encourage one another to embrace this path and then do whatever you want to do with it uh, individually, independently. 
right? But you're encouraging each other through the path. One of the strongest and best ways to increase your uh, psychic gifts and abilities and your intuition and your healing ability is to heal yourself. And so I feel like the two of you are coming in and you're healing each other. You're healing each other by being the healthy relationship and by balancing the power dynamic, right? Because you might be like, man, I wish I had somebody that I could depend on. I wish I had somebody who could be the rock. I wish I had somebody that I could lean on. But then the other side of that is, well, if I do that, then I'm giving up my power and then they're going to uh, abuse their power over me. And then they're going to be this person who is, um, you know, like, you know, controlling everything. And there's that fear. But in this dynamic with this person, you're learning that balance and you're, you're being able to have, you know, somebody come in and exercise leadership in a healthy way. And you may even take turns. You may even take turns in terms of like who's driving, so to speak. But you don't have to handle everything by yourself. You don't have to do everything on your own. This is something that's happening with this relationship. Um, but I'm getting, I'm, it's so interesting because I'm doing a love reading, but I'm just getting so much around uh, spiritual awakening and psychic gifts and spiritual gifts and abilities and talents. Um, I don't know. I just feel like you guys are coming together and, and doing really big things, really big things. You might be coming together uh, and forming uh, certain healing centers or uh, nonprofit organizations or uh, you might be doing things like uh, podcasts, spiritual podcasts or, or just like, like teaching or workshops. Uh, but I just feel like it just feels to me like a dynamic here of a, a, a couple that is involved in a, in a lot of spiritual work, a lot of spiritual work and, and two very highly gifted people spiritually. You're gifted too. You know, I, I, I kind of really talked up this other person about like how, like how extremely uh, clairvoyant they are, but you're talented too. You're gifted too. Right, it feels to me like these two powerhouses coming together. Now, your next major arcana card is the lovers. Some of you could be dealing with Gemini or Gemini energy. The lovers card obviously is seen as romantic relationships, but it's also a card that comes up when we're making choices and decisions. Like, what do we want and what are we sacrificing for it? Or what are the priorities of the relationship? Lover's card for me a lot of the times comes up in readings when spirit is asking us, what does love mean to you? What kind of love do you want? And I feel like a lot of you have been wondering that for a long time and you don't know what it is. But I feel with this person, you're like, this is what I've been looking for. Like, like this is falling together. This is coming together. Now, you might have to make certain sacrifices for this relationship. People might feel like you're changing a lot, and they might blame it on this person. Oh, Sagittarius, ever since you got with that person, I don't like the person you're becoming. You're changing. You're getting all weird. And they don't realize that you're like, no, <laughs> I've been going through these changes. This person is not changing me. I've been going through these changes. I've just finally found somebody that is aligned with where I'm headed. They're not changing me. But your friends and family might not understand that. They're going to forever look at this person like Sagittarius was normal until this person came along and put all this stuff in Sagittarius' head. And now Sagittarius is doing all this weird woo-woo spiritual stuff, right? Like they're looking at you like this person came in and changed you. So you might find that you're making certain sacrifices or uh, certain relationships are kind of taking a hit uh, because of the changes that you're going through and because of the person that you're with. 
um, there's going to be some criticisms. You might not be getting a lot of support. And I think it's going to be hard for some of you, Sagittarius, because I feel like a part of your healing, some of your relationships have finally improved, like with family, like with siblings and stuff. And you kind of feel like, okay, like they see that I'm changing. They see that I'm growing. They see that I'm maturing. I'm finally getting some praise. I'm finally getting some approval. And now you're with this person and they're criticizing again. And you feel like, oh, Lord, here we go. We're right back to where we started from. And you're like, well, am I going to not see this person to keep their approval? Or am I going to be true to myself and continue with this relationship? And you know what? They disapproved me for so long. Big deal. Uh, I'm used to it by now, right? Uh, you might be having to make that kind of a choice here in terms of approval. I don't know why, and I don't want to say it, but but Spirit uh, doesn't let me not say things anymore. I get in trouble when I don't say things. Sometimes I hear something like, I don't want to say it, and Spirit keeps repeating it. And if Spirit keeps repeating it, it's like, Amethyst, you have to say it. You have to say it. I keep hearing dirty hippie. Dirty hippie. Ew, this dirty hippie. Um, so I, I just have to tell you, Sagittarius, I don't feel like you're with a, with somebody who's dirty. Um, I can see how maybe they might get labeled as, as a hippie. Uh, but I do feel like people are acting like this person is like gross or the, the, they're dirty or, um, they're, 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 they're a hippie or they, they're not doing something serious with their life. I don't feel like you're dealing with like a, you know, somebody who doesn't have it together. You know, I don't feel like you're dealing with somebody who is, you know, quote unquote, a loser, but that's how the, some of the people in your life are acting about this person. And I feel like that's where the sacrifice comes in for you because on one hand, you feel like you can be yourself with this person and you feel like they get you and you feel this really strong connection and you, you're feeling like this is someone that I can explore my spirituality with. And on the other hand, the relationships that have been improving as you've been healing, now you're like, great, I'm right back where I started from with them again. And you're having to choose what you want to do. But because you're coming into your authenticity and coming into your power, I have a feeling that the majority of you, if not all of you, are going to choose to just move forward. Like, th this is who I am. This is my life. I love this person. They love me. They're good to me. They make me happy. And you're like, you know, you don't have to accept it if you don't want to, you know, but, but this is how it's going to be. Your next card here is the star. This could be Aquarius energy. Now, the star follows the tower. And so the star basically comes up and says, the tower is gone. It's over. The worst of it is behind you. The destruction is behind you. And now you've come into the time of building. Now you've come into the time of creating. And the plans you make now are actually going to stick. Uh, so I feel like with this person, you're making really long-term plans. Like you guys are talking about retirement. You guys are talking about the future. You guys are talking about uh, things you're wanting to do in, 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 in the sense of like making a difference or making the world a better place or how you want to use your gifts and talents to bring about a positive change. The star is the path of the wounded healer. You made it out of the darkness and you rose above it a shining light. And now you're... you're you're shining and showing others the way out of the darkness. There's a lot of inspiration. There's a lot of creativity. Okay, there's a lot of beauty. Um, so I feel Sagittarius, you're feeling very beautiful. You're feeling absolutely gorgeous. And you're looking at this person and you're like, oh, how did I get so lucky? I'm with the most attractive person on the planet. I just feel there's a strong physical attraction as well as a strong emotional and spiritual attraction. And um, you're just feeling like, how did I get so lucky? How did I get so lucky? And um, that whole thing of like shining and showing others the way out of the darkness, I feel you guys are doing something coming together and like helping and mentoring other couples because you understand dysfunction. You understand inherited negative 
energies. You understand awakening uh, around people who think that you've absolutely lost your mind. You understand that. And so I feel like you guys other and you're helping other people. You're helping other couples, especially. Um, it's very interesting reading. I, I've never had a, a love reading come up like this. But it's good stuff. And I'm excited for you. Uh, be sure to check out your moon sign and rising sign videos. Some weeks that might resonate with you or some months, I should say, might resonate with you more than your sun sign. A lot of people like to watch their Venus sign when it comes to love readings. Um, if you would like a private reading with me, you can schedule by going to calendly.com slash amethyst angel light and scheduling a private reading with me there. Some people have reached out and asked me about sending donations or tips for the videos that I post on YouTube. Uh, I really appreciate that if you feel moved to do that. It's the sweetest thing. I mean, no, no amount is too small. I do appreciate uh, people who want to do that. I'm not a wealthy person by any means, so every bit is appreciated. If you want to do that, you can just go to paypal.com um, or to the PayPal app on your phone and send it to my email address, which is amethystangellight at gmail.com. Uh, don't forget to check out the weekly forecasts. Those are returning. They're going to be coming up here again. And I thank you all for watching, liking, sharing, commenting, subscribing. Have a wonderful October, my dears. Hopefully, I'll see you all in the weekly forecast as well in the comments, at least, because I can't see you through the screen. All right, my dears. Take care.